Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, John. <laughs> Excuse me. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Uh, on Tuesdays, Pastor, we talk about current events, some of the things that are going on worldwide. And then on Thursdays, we focus on some of the things that you taught about or more of the spiritual aspects. And But today, Pastor, I, I, I wanted to ask you a question, and it's going to be obviously based on your opinion. Uh, from the eyes of the entire world, is America declining? Is America declining in the eyes of the world? Yes. Yes, I would say that it is. I would say that the way that our government is interacting with uh, some of the major governments of the world, Russia, China, for example, not to mention Iran or various other uh, Middle Eastern countries, I, I would say, yeah, we have diminished in the eyes of the world in terms of the respect that we at one time had. Um, and in, and just in terms of um, just the kind of nation we have at this moment, yeah, I would say that I know that. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even, I don't even know that that's an opinion. I think that that's an established reality at the moment. You know, I believe that uh, under the leadership, our, our present leadership, we're, we are actually um, communicating to the, to the world that we're indecisive and that we don't have really any, any resolve. And so we're being bullied. And I believe that that, that, that tactic of bullying is something that uh, is being used effectively because the progressive mentality has a tendency of um, wanting to bring compromise to all situations as if you can talk your way into peace. And if you give up enough of this, maybe they'll leave us alone. It's almost like, like the, the little guy who's being pushed around by the big guy. And uh, that's kind of how it's going right now. And I see that as being part of the inability for people with a certain mindset, and I'll use the term progressive and even woke, we'll say, mm -hmm. that particular mindset. I really believe that that is something that has been um, germinated within the mind of Americans, especially Americans who are uh, going through education, through, through higher education in college. I believe that because of the humanism that is uh, basically the foundation of the way we look at, at, at people, meaning that they're really good people just making bad decisions and all, uh, we have a tendency of eliminating the reality of a sin nature. And um, so we make excuses for the behavior and think that we can change behavior by just being nice and talking. I remember a true story of a young college girl. She was a behavioral science major. She was a psychology major. And uh, she had actually been abducted. This is a true story. She had been abducted and was in a car. And um, the guy who had abducted her uh, pulled over into the gas station, local gas station, and was beginning to fill his tank when he didn't realize at the moment. But he had left the, um, the car keys in the ignition and he had locked himself out of the car. So now this woman is in plain view of witnesses. She's seated in a car. The car keys are inside the car. The man is locked outside of the car and he begins to panic trying to open the door. This is a guy who has kidnapped her and she's a psychology major. And so what did she do when she had witnesses? She's in the open. She has the car keys, the doors locked. What did she do? She reached over and opened the door. She reached over and opened the door. The man raped her and murdered her and left her body on the side of the road. Why did she do that? She did that because she was brainwashed into believing that people are, can be reasoned with, that they don't intend to hurt you, and uh, she had learned this in her humanism, in her mm -hmm. psychology classes. And so that is the rampant mindset, you know, that America's evil. America has done evil to everybody. And uh, I believe that the, uh, 
the present administration is infected with that, and I believe that the uh, president of the United States and his, uh, his uh, vice president are infected by that. And yeah, because of the weakness that we see, because of the double-mindedness, because the indecisiveness, because of the variety of things that are going on, there's so many things to point to. You know, open borders and uh, releasing of prisoners uh, with, with just without even arresting them for the crimes that they're committing, and a variety of the other things that you could go on one after another. The, uh, the world is watching, and, um, and I do believe we've lost credibility, and we are perceived at this moment as being very weak. Yes. So as a Christian church, how do we, re as Christians in the church today, how do we respond in terms of where to be of the world, but not of this world, right? Well, here's the thing, you know, John, I, I, I think that even as scripture says that we are to pray for those in authority, I think it's really something the church um, perhaps needs to practice even with greater intensity, and that's one thing. The second thing is to make our voices known, our voices heard, the things that we believe should be uh, said with confidence and openly. You know, we see, for example, we're seeing right now uh, in various places, parents who are finally tired of the kind of uh, force feeding of uh, progressive pro propaganda on their children and they're rising up and they're saying, you work for us. You know, we elected you and, and like it happened in San Francisco, we elected you and we will now remove you because even in San Francisco, which has single digit Republican voters, um, parents are parents and, and they did not like where their kids were going and instead of caring for the children, they're busy trying to rename schools, you know. <laughs> it's just an amazing weirdness that, that's going on. And so I, I think that we're, we're, I'm very hopeful. I believe that parents are, are, are waking up. I believe that uh, many American citizens are waking up to what's taking place. I mean, I went and put gasoline in my car the other day and, and you know, this time last year, it was, uh, you know, two dollars in 70 plus cents a gallon and it was five dollars. You know, in one year, we have a president who who gave permission to the Russians or his his uh, 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 ceded to the Russians uh, the possibility for them to to have a, 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 a what do you call it a uh, uh, a line for for their fuel and everything. I forget it was called for some reason. I went blank on that, but he he opened up the possibility for them to be um, using a particular pipeline for oil to be. Uh, brought into Germany and Western Europe while well, he's shutting down the pipelines here in the United States. You know, we, we have ships that are still docked and are unable to to unload because of the the kinds of leadership we have. So yeah, I think that people are beginning to to awaken to these things and, and um, I was no fan of the personality of Donald Trump, the former president, but I was uh, uh, in favor of the fact that he loved America. And um, I believe that what we have right now is is not a love for America. It's a, it's actually a, a, a hatred, if you will, a self-hatred of, of America. But I still believe, like Bush um, said, that uh, America is really a, uh, you know, we're a shining light on the hill. And uh, we still are a great nation, and I have great hope for it. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things I want to talk about next time is, uh, the, uh, you know, term limits. You know, the term limits that we have because it seems like we have the same people over and over serving these long terms that uh, really aren't doing anything for our country. Well, one of the definitions for insanity is to do the same thing, expecting, <laughs> a, expecting a different result. I mean, when you have somebody who the last six months of their term begin to tell you all the things they're going to do, and you forget they did nothing in the first portion of their term, and then you re-elect him because he's got a D or an R, for that matter, in front, you know, after his name or her name. Yeah, I, I think that, that uh, America better wake up because we have the government that we vote in or refuse to vote. You know, a lot of Christians don't even vote. Right. So we have the government we deserve in, in the end, yeah. You know, Pastor, just to close on this note, uh, last time we were in Israel, I, uh, you know, we eat as a group and we were in uh, Tiberias and, and we ate as a group, but 
for some reason, uh, I broke off and ate, not with the group, but uh, alone. And there was an older couple there. And she was a school teacher, retired, both are retired. And I asked them, what are, what are your thoughts on the United States? And you know, they kind of chuckled and they were saying that it's become the laughing stock in the eyes of many people. I think so. I think so. Um, when you when you kick God out of your nation the way this society has done, when we say we don't need you, this is what we end up with. Mm -hmm. You know the moral fabric, the the idea of courage and faithfulness and loyalty and 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 love for family and all of those things are biblical ideas you know so when you when you kick god out of those things and you, you go with the root of humanism and progressivism and wokeism whatever you want to call it this is what you end up with and so i am praying for revival i'm praying that pastors will actually teach the word of god and encourage the people to live for god to share the the gospel of grace with people and, and show them this is where hope is. It's in Christ. Amen. It's not in your government, but as people, we can elect those who represent us best and therefore be active in that. Amen. But don't put your hope in man. Don't put your hope in a, a president. Put your hope in the Lord and vote accordingly. And I still have hope. I still do uh, for this nation. And I'm, I, I do hope through Jesus Christ uh, that the message of the gospel will go forth and people will actually come to come to know him and this nation can be transformed amen mm -hmm. pastor thank you so much for sharing with us i want to invite our church family to our wednesday evening services tomorrow at 7 p.m as pastor you're taking us through the book of ephesians ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 through 13 it's the preface to a prayer that paul begins mm -hmm. in verse 14 it's gonna be a good study i think it is <laughs> i've enjoyed studying for it and you know what uh on sunday and i keep going but i, I we were talking about this yesterday you know, the Lord's doing an amazing work here at our church. Even uh, Sunday services, I was thinking, I was telling my wife, Spirit's moving. The worship, the Word, uh, we are talking about yesterday how your teaching has been more fire, you know, and, and so we see uh, our, our crowd getting a little bigger, and I know it's not about that, but you can sense the Spirit moving, and, and uh, this is where I want to take the time to invite you guys to come on out because it's been a great study in Ephesians. I love it. Yeah, it's been uh, very practical. And the foundation that you laid beforehand and then just get into the study is just, it's amazing and getting a lot of good feedback. So cool. I want to invite you guys to come on out. Uh, March 2nd, mark your calendars. The Katinas are coming out on a Wednesday evening. That's actually next week, isn't it? I believe it is. Oh, goodness. Next week, uh, 7 p.m. in our sanctuary. They're going to lead worship. And they're actually going to do the service as well. Yeah, that's going to be great. So invite your friends and family to come on out for that. And Pastor, thank you again for sharing with us. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. We'll see you soon.